Cause I'm the data guy, making bytes fly high, diving deep into the data, reaching for the sky, from ETLs to data lakes and pipelines that don't break. Tune in, hang on, and let's make data great. Hey y'all, data guy here. And today I got a video for you on how you can run Airflow locally pretty quickly without Docker desktop. So as I've heard from a lot of you, and as a lot of you have complained to me about, is you have to pay for Docker Desktop now. They've changed their licensing, and it's not always free, and not only not everyone can have access to it. So that is why we, or why, not why we, but that is why now I'm releasing this video on how you can use Podman Desktop with the Astro CLI to run Airflow locally really quickly without any technical experience needed. Um, so. First thing you're going to want to do, as you might have guessed, is download Podman Desktop. So go to Podman Desktop, hit download now, do the quick installation process. And then you're also going to want to download the Astro CLI. So run brew install Astro. Um, and then you're going to want to then create an Astro directory. So after you've done brew install Astro, you then can run the quick start, which is just run Astro dev init. It'll generate a fresh airflow environment for you. Uh, totally empty, which is two example DAGs. And then you could start it with Docker Desktop using Astro Dev Start. But that's not what we're here for. So I'm here to show you how to do it with Podman. So let's go kick it over to Podman and let's do some of the setup there. And so here we just have Podman Desktop, um, where I am just going to, so you can see it supports many different container engines. Orchestrator, so Podman is kind of like an open source uh, Docker Desktop that doesn't just rely on Docker Desktop. It's, you know, a way to do container engines and orchestra and kind of your local mini clusters um, without just being locked into Docker. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just go to Docker Desktop, and then we're actually going to need to install Podman again. So here we're gonna install Podman 4.6.2. Um, anything after Podman 3.0 will work. Um, so I'm off on the side clicking through the licensing, and then it's going to install. So then what you'll need to do is, and I'm just in a local Airflow directory here, so imagining I've already just Astro dev -initted. Um, I am then going to run a Podman machine in it, and it's not going to work. So what do I need to install first? So what happened was I didn't have the Podman CLI installed, so I did a brew install Podman uh, and got it all installed. So now let's do a Podman machine init, and we want to allow it to accept incoming network connections, and now it's going to uh, start downloading a VM image and initializing a Podman instance. So I'll let it run and not make you sit here. So now that it's initialized, which is basically just downloading the VM image it needs to actually run, uh, we'll then run podman machine start. And hopefully this works so I don't look foolish again. Um, so here it's going to start the machine and I'm gonna go kill my actual Docker desktop one. I bet you could actually run two Airflow instances locally too though, if you uh, ran both Docker and uh, podman. I guess you could do it anyways if you just put them on different ports, but yeah, anyways. Just amusing um so here i'll cut out again to wait for it to actual start so if you're on an m1 mac like i am you'll actually need to also set podman machine rootful um, because there is some bug with volumes when you're running in rootless mode which is the default as you can see here so you definitely need to kill docker actually before you start using podman because that's why i kept getting errors um so once you have killed your docker environment if you're using it if you're not if you're just using podman then Good on you. You never had to do that, but I did. So just want to let that tip out for anyone that is uh, dealing with that. So after you're done with that, we're going to Podman PS. And so then after you have your Podman machine up and running, uh, you're going to want to run this command, uh, Podman run RM it Postgres. And so who am I? All this is, is just checking that uh, Podman has access to the Astro images since we'll be using Astro CLI here to actually run Podman. Um, so it's going to need access to that. So after we've done that, what we'll then need to do is change the default container management engine for the Astro CLI. So here we're going to Astro config set G uh, container dot binary podman. Um, and this will set our con default container to use podman. Um, if you are using podman three, um, which I guess we are, we're using, or we're not really using podman three, but let's just see, we'll use it anyways. Then we're gonna run this command as well. Um, and then we should be able to run our Astro project using Podman. So now here, when we run Astro dev start, 
what this will then do is use Podman to build all of our machines and then run our Airflow environment. So we'll still have the same local development experience. We're going to localhost 8080, um, and then you know you configure it using Podman as well. And Podman, again, pretty similar to Docker Desktop, but it is a little bit more extensible. And again, it's totally free, um, which is always a great feature to have in any system. Um, so I'll let this run and check back in once it's done. As you can see, we have the full Airflow components all started up. So just wanted to show you this and I'll check back in in a second once it's all done. And boom, there we go. We have our components available um, and then we'll go check out the localhost, make sure they actually are. And boom, here we have it. Fresh Airflow UI, log in and bang, bang, bang. We have our handy dandy new Airflow UI um, using Podman. So totally free, doesn't require Docker desktop. Uh, so if you have been held up by, you know, not being able to run Airflow locally because you don't have Docker desktop, check this out. Uh, it's really not that hard to set up. Um, so as you can see, I just did this in what, under six minutes, just a couple waiting around and tricky things. But if you haven't used Docker desktop before, you won't run into those errors. Uh, so even better for you. Um, so that's all I have for you today. Pretty quick video as promised. Um, so please go try this out. If you like this video, if you found it useful, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you here tomorrow for another video. Data guy out.